Do I sound funny with these glasses on my nose? Are they pinching me? I hope they don't make me sound weird. I might have to swap them for different glasses anyway because they're not prescription and I can't see through them. But sometimes you have to suffer for the aesthetic. So here we are. We have another DIY type video. Because I've been busy. I've been so busy altering clothes. I've built up a backlog of several videos because there's a lot of stuff that I was altering. I was like bleaching and dyeing and changing up loads of my clothes. And I've been filming it along the way. And now my ring is caught in my shirt. Oh no, there we go. It's loose. So over the past month or so I've been filming the process of all these things that I've been altering and I'm going to make videos on all of them when they're finished. And I finally have finished one. Well, it's finished for now. I'm... Um, is any project ever truly finished? I don't know. I don't know. There's always more that can be done, I think. There you are. Hello. He's my girl. He's a good dog. Okay. Oh my god. It's gonna be that kind of day. Can we actually do this video now? So, as I was saying, I have been altering loads of my clothes. I've mainly been bleaching and dyeing them different colours, adding patches here and there and you'll see, you'll see because I've made videos of all of it. And today I want to talk about RIT bleach because I had never used that before starting this project and it was a whole learning curve. I have bleached clothes before. I bleached my... I bleached that velvet jacket and made it into a pink velvet jacket. But I've bleached other clothes as well. I used to um, bleach jeans and then dye them red to make a kind of blood splatter effect, which is always a fun look. I've done that with loads of clothes actually, but I've never used um, RIT brand bleach that's intended for clothing, you know? Because I'd never used it before, I thought the best thing to do would be to do a bunch of experiments, essentially. I just grabbed several several like, casual clothes items, stuff that I wasn't that precious about, to kind of test the bleach and just try and get my head around how it worked, because with this particular kind of bleach you have to boil it on a stove. Or at least keep it hot, but you know, the hotter, the hotter you can keep it, the better it works and the faster it works. So that was different from what I was used to because I don't usually involve fire in what I'm doing because for some reason I decided to just do it this time. The general, the general instructions for red dye, red bleach rather, is to just dissolve it all in a pot of boiling water and then add your clothes to it. You have to measure out all the instructions for how much water and how much fabric to measure out is in the box. So you can you can kind of get all of that from the box. But in general, you boil it and the hotter it is, the faster it'll work. The only real rule is that you can't use it on blue jeans. And that is because blue jeans and blue denim in general is usually dyed with indigo and indigo is for some reason stronger than any bleach. <laughs> I, I don't know why it's also stronger than most dyes. I couldn't I couldn't tell you why that is I don't I'm not smart enough to know that I just know that it is and that's why you're not supposed to use um, bleach on denim or on blue denim specifically. So I thought I would test it on black denim first. <laughs> um, if you are just here to see the um, the jacket that I altered, you can skip ahead. I'm going to tell you about my experiments first. Just a heads up. I'm going to tell you about all the experiments I did first and then get into the actual jacket that I successfully altered. So if you just want to skip all the experiments, I'll put a little timestamp for you to skip to. Oh my god, Silver. 
So, I tried to bleach some black jeans because I thought cheap black jeans probably weren't dyed with indigo, right? Or if they were, I would find out. <laughs> I would find out the hard way, I suppose. Um, they absolutely were dyed with indigo. The black leached out into the water and it started to stain the pot. It stained everything. It spilled over the edges. It got everywhere. And the jeans did seem to lighten while they were in the pot. They seemed to be turning brown, which was okay because I can dye on top of that. This was It was also just an experiment, so it didn't really matter what colour they turned. But I thought... While that was happening, I also bleached a t-shirt. I put them in the same pot, which might have been a mistake. Did I put them in the same pot or did I just rinse them together? I think I just rinsed them together, which was still a mistake because indigo will leak everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So I took the black jeans and this red t-shirt, I boiled them both in bleach until they came up to they looked like they were going to be brown jeans and like a light yellow t-shirt which is again I can dye it on top of that so that's fine but when I took them out of the bleach and put them in cold water they both turned black they so the jeans that started out black just went straight back to black as soon as I took them out of the bleach I'm not entirely sure why that happened I guess the indigo that was left in the fibres just kind of spread back out again and took over and dyed it all black again but because the t-shirt was also in the cold water it leaked into the t-shirt so this t-shirt that had started out red that I bleached actually ended up black in the end so I don't know it's a learning curve like I said I had experiments to run I had a lot to learn about this process the t-shirt, that t-shirt, I eventually put it in a different type of bleach. It's just household bleach and turned it grey and now it's like kind of grey dip dyed looking. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So that worked out fine. But <laughs> that was my first experiment with RIT bleach. Hello. But now I had kind of learned how it works essentially. I knew I had to boil it. I knew not to put in jeans at all. And I knew to rinse things separately. This will be important later. Keep that in mind. It might not be relevant in this video, but if you watch my other DIY and alterations videos, keep that part in mind. Rinse things separately. So, the jacket I was going to alter, this one, I will insert a clip of it. I got this for free at a swap meet. My friend, um, she just wasn't going to wear it, essentially. It's a really nice shape. It's, it was just a very flattering shape, but the friend that owned it, she mainly wears pastel colours and pinks and you know, cuter stuff. So she was never going to wear camel print. And admittedly, neither was I, but I was willing to experiment on it and try and turn it into something that I might wear. She suggested just dyeing it black, which admittedly would have been sensible. I absolutely could have done that. And I still might in the future. If I get sick of it the way it is, I might dye it black in the future. Who knows? But I thought the first thing I would try and do was bleach the camel print out of it. So it started out green and brown. I boiled it in the red bleach. And it turned yellow. It turned absolutely bright screaming yellow. Excuse me, I have my notes. I have notes here because, like I said, I've been working on this for a few, over a month or so, and I've been working on loads of projects at the same time. So, I've been keeping notes on what I did. Also, these glasses aren't 
my prescription. I can't see through them. I need to... I need my reading glasses. <laughs> okay. Right. So the first thing that happened was it turned yellow. It turned bright yellow. Which is not what I wanted at all. But it kind of gave me an idea that I could potentially dye it red. I do, I wear red a lot. I wear red arguably more than I wear green, but I do like both colours. But also, I don't know, my life kind of runs on things that keep my interest, or novelty I guess, or things that are different. So once it turned yellow and I realised I could potentially dye it red, I also realised that that would be much much further removed from camo than green was, which was more interesting to me because I would rather make it as different as possible because, I don't know, my brain's just like that. I like to make things as, I don't know, I guess I just run on things being as novel as possible. I don't get bored easily, but I also like to make things as, I like to make things difficult for myself, apparently. But I didn't, the... The only problem with dyeing it red was that the bows in the front and the bows in the back didn't bleach. They stayed green. And if I dye it red with green bows, really the only time you can ever wear that is Christmas. And as much as I like both red and green, I really, really don't like Christmassy aesthetics. So I figured I was going to bleach it again, but I was going to put it in... Um, like household bleach rather than clothing bleach and I was going to see if either the brown on the trim or the green in the bows would bleach out first because I figured if the brown bleached out then I would dye the whole thing green and if the green bleached out I would dye the whole thing red. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So that was roughly my plan. So the reason the reason I thought it was a good idea to bleach it again, but in different bleach, is because different types of bleach are obviously just different chemicals. So they react differently to different types of dye, because dye is also just different chemicals. Like, every, everything is, right? Everything on the planet is chemicals. And I'm not smart enough to understand it very deeply, but I can tell you that different types of bleach will react differently to different types of dye and to different fabrics. So I thought I would use bathroom bleach. That seemed fine. And I dumped it in that and nothing happened. Nothing at all. Neither the brown nor the green came out. So it was still, it was still yellow, but with a brown trim and green bows, which was equally likely to happen, honestly. You know, some fabric just can't be bleached or dyed, and that's the way it is. I went back to- I dropped the idea of dyeing it red and just went back to the idea of dyeing it green because I didn't want it to be, like, a weird Christmas jacket, essentially. <laughs> also, I have a bunch of other projects that I'm going to use red dye on, and I thought I should mix it up a little bit. Keep a little bit of variety in my wardrobe. So, green it is. Green it is. And I use Dialon hand dye. I'm so familiar with this stuff now. I think I have gone through so many packets of Dialon hand dye in my life. I'd... It's crazy. I've been through so many of them. But this time we're using green. And the process is so simple because with Dialon you don't need to boil it. I think it's to do with the fabric you're using more than anything else because I know that wool has to be boiled for it to bleach or for it to take dye in. Or not boiled so much as just it needs to be kept hot and the hotter the fabric is or the hotter the water it's in, the stronger it, the, the better it works essentially. I don't know, but this didn't, you know, dial on dye doesn't tell you to do that, but I think it also says it mainly works on cotton, and cotton just doesn't need to be boiled to dye, so 
that is what it is. I guess if you wanted to make it a stronger colour, you could boil it. Like, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. I just chose not to because I was kind of sick of having to boil things on the cooker. So as usual, the packet, the dye packet tells you how much of how much of the dye you use per weight. So you have to kind of weigh the fabric or estimate it. I can't claim I actually weighed my fabric. I didn't. I just sort of guessed. I did measure out the liquid though because it tells you how much of how many liters of water to use to make the dye its true color and you can obviously just add more water if you want it to be a lighter color but all the numbers are on the pack the dye packet so I'm not going to bother reiterating all of them here if you decide to do this all the numbers will be on the packet so I dyed it I dyed it green and it took to the yellow really well, covered all the yellow up in green, and now I have a green jacket. If you get right up close, you can still kind of see the pattern on it, like the, the pattern that used to be camel print, you can kind of see it if you get right up close. But I think it mostly just looks like it's slightly uneven, like maybe I just didn't dye it properly, and I can live with that. From afar, it definitely just looks green, and that's great. Let me know what you think in a comment. Do you think it's better now? Do you think I should have just dyed? Do you think I should have dyed it red? Do you think I should have dyed it black? What would you have done with it? If this had been your project, what would you have done with it? Let me know. I always want to know, you know, I just I always just want to know these things. But personally, I really like how it turned out. I am considering maybe doing another round of green, make it a little bit darker. But only if I get sick of it the way it is. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, keep an eye out for outfit pictures in the future where I'm wearing this jacket. You will no doubt see it at some point. Also don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more DIY videos and you know my travel videos and my art videos and all the other stuff that I do but there will be a lot more DIY videos in the coming month or two. I might spread them out a little more because I really have been working on a lot but I'll try and break it up so that it isn't just the same thing week after week. <sighs> okay, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If there's any important information you think I missed, ask me about it in a comment. I'm sure I'll get back to you at some point. If you feel like supporting me on Patreon, do that too. Okay, bye.